Hi, everyone, uh, and welcome to the first episode of Property Investing, Investing Decoded. Uh, my name is Ashish Saraf, and I'm the founder and CEO of Novi Technologies. I run a property investing platform, and we put together this series to bring from various places experienced property professionals having diverse set of skills, knowledge, so that they are able to share their experience in what they've done with property so far. The series is intended towards helping new investors and not so sophisticated investors who have potentially not invested earlier, but are now planning to get into property as a passive income re regime. I have with me two great property experts, Narinder Singh, who's the founder and director of Westmore Capital. Westmore is an asset management firm, and they actively invest in portfolios of assets across the country. And Richard Wynn, who has been a mortgage broker, has run his own business and has been a landlord as well. So I'm very excited that we'll get a very diverse set of views on the subjects we are going to talk about. But we are going to start with the introductions. And I'll let Narinder introduce himself first, followed by Richard. Yes, thank you, Ashish. I hope you can hear me okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> Yes, hi, my name is Narinda Singh, I'm based here in London. Uh, I'm an investor, landlord, and you could say developer. I've been in prop involved in property for over 20 years and have built up a residential and commercial portfolio of property, mainly in London and in some parts of the Southeast. Yeah, that's the, my, my background is actually in structured finance. I had a corporate career for over 20 years working for the likes of G Capital amongst other, other sort of financial companies. But really, I, I got involved in property because ultimately I was interested in, she says, passive income. So I did been started to invest in property over some time. So I've been involved in many different areas of property. Thank you, Narinder. Richard, go ahead. Yeah, so I've been involved in property since I was about 22, so about 16 years now. During my 20s, I was portfolio landlord, a couple of HMOs, a few, few of the smaller properties. Up north in the Hull area, we buy a three bed for 40 grand, you know, back in the good old days. And uh, yeah, I, I now run a, my own consultancy, maybe in the fintech and, and, and prop tech space. And this is, I was a fintech founder for three years. We had a, a, a mortgage fintech called Hooched. And that was, I think, 2016 to 19. And then, yeah, since then, I've been work, worked for, for Connells in various guises and, and built some really good stuff for them. Very sort of tech-based, but always like to keep my hand in the, uh, the sort of property side and, uh, you know, always looking for that, that right investment and, and, and the right thing to sort of go for at that time. Starting with the conversation, so Narinder, why don't you start this discussion with the basic question which everyone has on their minds? What should I look for when I'm investing in a property? I know it's a very wide subject, but things that you might have looked for or maybe your tips on success, things to avoid, et cetera, would be the kind of things the audience would be looking for. Narinda. Sure. That's a quite a, a broad, broad question, but let, let me let me share my 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 experience. And I go back to when I had a corporate career and, and was very interested in purchasing property, but I, I had a, I was tied down to a nine to five job. And really it, it was, well, what was possible? What, what would work, work for me? And what I was started to buy was single let property. And that's houses and flats in areas that I was, I was familiar with, where I knew that there was going to be a good rental demand. And that was sort of the, the sort of the starting point of, of what I would be looking for. But really, it comes down to how much time have you really got to spend on property? Because, as, as you know, this ever changing regulation around management of the property. So there's, there's really you've got to be clear on how much time you actually can put and willing to put in in terms of an investment. So as well as looking at sort of, you know, things like sort of rental demand, what kind of yield that you'll be looking for, what kind of return you'll be looking for. But I, I still think, you know, you've got to be looking at how hands-off can you be, if possible, 
right now? Does that answer you, answer your your question? <laughs> no, I mean it's a good start for sure. Uh, there is a lot of there are a lot of considerations when we talk about property investing, and everyone has their own view of what they should be looking for, and that's the whole idea behind this series to bring in multiple different views of who looks for what, and then perhaps arriving at some sort of a melting pot. But Richard, my same question to you would be, what would you look for or what did you look for in the past when you started your property career? And what were the few, I would say, key success factors that really worked for you? Yeah, I mean, my, mine was relatively sort of simple. If it gives me a yield between six to 8% on average, then I'm good. That's good. That's, you know, I'm not greedy. That, that's a good little, good little earner for me. And, you know, I'll get a cheap mortgage on it and it pays itself off in 10 years. So, yeah, I, that, that sort of, I, I was always looking at, at, at that. I looked at it when I, as a pension more, more than anything. So I would just put the rent straight back into the, the, the mortgage to pay it off. So that I have that passive income when I'm older. So, you know, for me, it was, it, it was pretty basic back then. Where I am with it now and where I'm seeing a real trend is it's actually new build properties. I think with all the, the you know, the ESG kind of stuff going on at the moment, a, a lot of either friends or, or, or clients as such are, are really interested in just going with the, the, the new build because it comes back to the thing Narinda was saying around, you know, how much time do you want to put in? Well, actually, if someone gets a new build or if you get a new build after the snagging, you pretty much don't have to do a lot for it for 10 years. So, you know, and you've got all the, everything that's coming out around regulations, which are going to hit landlords and, and all that sort of stuff. So if you're buying a new build, then all right, your yield might not be as good as it, it, it could be buying a HMO, but you, you, you seem to have that stability. And in, interestingly enough, or interesting to, to me anyway, um, myself and some, a, a friend of mine or business partner, we are helping some sort of buyers who are, are looking to invest over here from West Africa and the Middle East, as I spent some time out in, 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 in Dubai selling commercial real estate as well in, 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 in my past. We're looking at a, a, a sort of basically bringing out our prop tech, which streamlines that process for those buying from abroad over here and uh, across the board, they only want new build. Maybe because they're used to buying off plan, you know, that, that's fairly common in, 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 in Dubai. But, you know, that, that is really a trend that, that we're seeing and we're, we're looking, it's, it's called ClickPad, and, and, and we're looking to really sort of get that process down from a sort of 28-day exchange to, to sort of 12, 12 days, adding in all the KYC and everything into the all-in-one all sort of portal. So, you know, that's where I'm focusing on at the moment is, is will you get better returns 100% somewhere else? You know, but for that stability and how much time you want to put in for our sort of foreign investors, that that is is, is key to them. And so that that's where I would say I would go at, at, at the moment. Very interesting, Richard. You talk about new built and built to rent has been very much in the flavor for the last few years, I'd say. But I'd like to point a follow up question to Narinder on this one. Based on your development experience so far and and because you come from a structured finance background as well. Given the current interest rate regime, do you think new builds would break even for investors? I mean, it was okay for the last 10 years because base rates were zero. But in the current scenario where base rates are around four, mortgage rates are probably higher than that. Do you think new build yields would be able to justify a good equity IRR anymore? I, I think that's a point that a lot of people are looking at right now. I think new builds are, as, as Richard says, yes, everybody wants to live in a new apartment. Everything's clean and fresh. There's facilities and, and, and obviously the, the, the blocks are built in great locations. Uh, so it has a lot of positive factors going, going for it. But also the fact that, you know, we've been in a marketplace over the, over the last four to five years, which has been very positive on build to rent or, or, or new build flats. What we've also seen is an increase, a huge increase in costs. So it's not just trades costs, but in terms of construction costs, construction costs in terms of materials, 
availability of labor, cost of labor. So I, I do question whether it's sustainable in terms of the return on new builds. Every new, de- new build development is different. Some are located in some better areas than others. And, I, and I, I think that's going to be something that's going to be taken into account. And I think generally in the marketplace, we are not necessarily in, in for an adjustment as such, but things will be leveling off in the types of growth, the capital appreciation that we've had uh, certainly over the last uh, certainly over the last two years. So I, I do think that there's going to be questions as to whether that does meet the IRR requirement. But however, on the flip side of that, given where we are with rental demand, you, you, could, look, you could look at it slightly differently and say, well, that return you'll make if you just work on what your anticipated rentals are for a period of time. 